But keep going. When you speak of failure, you attract failure. When you speak of success, you attract success. I once made a survey of more than 30,000 men and women to ascertain their staying qualities in the face of failure and defeat. For the majority of those people who took it, only one setback, uh, for the majority of those people it took one, only one setback to wed them to defeat. Of those who kept on aspiring, another large percentage got started in various projects but quit even before meeting with defeat, before meeting with defeat. The defeat came not from circumstances, but from the built-in attitude of defeat which they carried from the past. Instead of closing the door on the past, which is what we learned before, they ran back through that door at every opportunity. Needless to say, there were no Fords or Edisons in this group. (laughs) Ford as in the person, not the geographical landmark. On the other hand, I am reminded of a man named Arthur Dezio, who built his career out of a family failure that had cost all of his father's savings. It was a business in mobile homes which never got going. Now the father handed it to the son hopelessly. What could Dezio, then in his twenties, do with the business? Most men would have liquidated it on the spot. Starting in this garage next to the railroad tracks in Eckert, Indiana, Mr. Dezio first designed a small, easily transportable mobile home with uh, which research had shown him was needed. Later, he applied General Motors methods in a business which had never been known before. He introduced frequent model changes. He built a network of dealers. He brought out four lines of mobile homes, each competing with the others. Ha ha ha! Hilarious. He created four different models of mobile homes and had them compete with each other. His company's sales in four years have increased 500%, and Mr. Dezio has made $5 million out of the business that was about to fail. Mind you, this is $5 million like literally 120 years ago. Today's population includes a large proportion of young marrieds and retired couples, both groups being prime customers for mobile homes. Of course, Mr. Dezio realizes this, for every age has its special ways. The many failures who turned up in my survey of some years ago displayed a failure quality which belongs to any age. Not only had those people failed, but they kept on living with their failures. They spoke of it in preference to other topics. They lived in the past tense, reliving the pain of what had been. Those who had succeeded, however, spoke in the future tense. In the future tense, their eyes were not upon their past, which often contained a good share of mistakes, but ever upon the future, upon their great objectives. This, too, was the invariable case with those 500 and more vastly successful men whom I interviewed at the behest of Andrew Carnegie. On their way up, they talked the way up. Where failure had been laid behind, failure stayed behind. And notably, it stayed out of their conversation. Out of their conversation. Now, I want to step, I want to touch on something real quick. Because we all have the homies. And we, we, some, sometimes we might be the homie. That whenever they have a conversation, it's always like, yeah, but man, he, me, me, man. And this is sort of... This is where we have the ford (laughs) the fork in the road with modern spirituality because people get we're get we're get we're getting into the sort of the secret as in the movie the secret category and like woke new age spirituality which like just think happy thoughts and good things will always happen and and so we're getting into that territory so i want to state something and make something clear uh this isn't just always think happy thoughts and always good things happen to you because bad things happen to you regardless welcome to being a human The point is, that's being made very well clear here, is the ability to let go of the past. Letting go of the, specifically, remember we were were talking subconscious mind, or programming the subconscious mind, programming the base frequency that we give out. The successful people had conversations about the future. And I'm assuming if they did have conversations about the past, and specifically past failures, it wasn't about the failure itself, but the seed of success that was planted within that failure. The seed of success that was equal in power to the power of the failure itself. I am guarantee you that's the conversation. And it's not woe is me. It's fan-fucking-tastic. 
that that happened or 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 maybe not fantastic that that happened right because it's not all gravy but fantastic i was able to gather myself enough during that calamity to dig a gold mine that's where we're at right this isn't all love and light baby i made a video the other day this is not a love and light channel you can be the most loveliest lightest person you done ever did lit a room and a meteorite will still fall on your head eventually, right? This isn't the love and light squad. This is the mechanisms of existence squad. And hopefully, be, and hopefully we go to, to the light side with it. Hopefully we're Jedi and not Sith. Hopefully. Or, 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 or if you do decide to go Sith side, I get it. Sith's got to exist, baby. If you do decide to go Sith, can you, can you find like, can you find a worthy adversary? We all want worthy adversaries, right? We all would imagine a Sith would want a worthy adversary. Maybe not, but it would be, it would be helpful. It would be helpful. My hat is off to you, sir. I'll see you in the ring. In other words, in other words, um, all right. I lost my spot. I got care. I blocked out what happened. I blocked out. Okay, those who had succeeded, however, spoke in the future tense. Their eyes not past. Yeah, yeah. Some friends beginning concerning su concerning success and failure. I have observed another trait which has much to do with peace of mind. It is obvious that those who are filled with malice and envy do not have peace of mind. Their malice and envy sour their lives often. Failure so often hates the very sight of success. Speaking with successful men, I have noticed they speak in complimentary terms of other men who are succeeding. Their attitude is not one of envy, but of willingness to learn from others. The failure, on the other hand, goes out of his way to find some adverse criticism of the successful person. If he can't find anything doubtful about the way that person does business, then he will pick at some other area. His malice is evident. And so is the sad fact that he not only cannot command what money can buy, but also he cannot attain peace of mind. Boo! Are you guys drinking water? Are you drinking plenty of water? I hope so. I hope you're drinking plenty of water. We, we, there's six concurrent viewers, and we have 66 views. 666! Six, six, six. It's like, hey, did you all say y'all... Trying to do a cold sub with money, it's all the de it's all the the devil enters chat. <laughs> I heard y'all was trying to make some more money. Yes, we are. Not today, Satan. Try to get that finance game hyped. You you guys all need to type finance in the comment section so that we hit that finance CPM. <laughs> Shout out if anyone runs a YouTube channel knows what I'm talking about. Is there a definite connection between being wealthy and having peace of mind? There is a connection, but it is not absolute. There certainly are poor people who have peace of mind, but there are far more rare than <laughs> but they are far more rare than folklore would have us believe. You need not be a millionaire, but without sufficient money, you are cut off from much in life that sustains the spirit. Interesting. If you are continually worrying about where your next meal is to come from, when you'll be able to get your shoes repaired, how you are going to pay your dentist bill, how many more years your house can go without paint, you have no peace of mind. If your lack of funds forces you to live in a shabby neighborhood so that you constantly worry about the influence upon your children, then again, you have no peace of mind. If you cannot occasionally buy and cherish something that is beautiful, if you cannot afford a vacation you really enjoy, if you can't partake of a motion picture or a stage show which you know was very much worthwhile, your mind does not have the chance to satisfy itself. Money brings much good into your life and much that nobody should have to do without. It is no surprise that there are many rich people who enjoy peace of mind, but there are many who do not. If the main purpose of a fortune is to make its possessor worry about keeping his fortune, peace of mind goes out the window. 
One of the failures which have illumined my knowledge and strengthened my soul came when I was quite wealthy. I simply became poor, quite poor. The circumstances are revealing. Perhaps as a compensation for the dirt-poor days of my youth, I became enamored in big houses, big cars, lush acreage, and similar symbols of wealth. Perhaps I was merely in line with my times, which seemed to demand that when a man had money, he had to display it. Today's millionaires are much less ostentatious. At any rate, my books were selling well. I had made a name as a trainer of salesmen. Other enterprises prospered, and so it seemed imperative that I must drive a Rolls Royce. Soon I had a pair of Rolls Royces. Soon after this, I cradled my cars in a big garage on a large estate in the Catskill Mountains north of New York City. I saw that estate as a monument to my achievements. This state called for servants, for a maintenance staff, for foremen over the maintenance men. It called for lavish dinner parties, the expense of which would have been made by John T. Rockefeller. <laughs> so he was balling. Once I gave out a general invitation to a barbecue dinner, expecting that perhaps a hundred people would show up, over 3,000 came. The highway was tied up with a traffic jam for two miles each way, and the traffic patrolman never did forgive me. The clubhouse on the estate could sleep 40 guests in comfort and was seldom without a full load. Once the overflow swept into my private quarters, I arrived home hoping for some peace of mind and found a stranger asleep in my bed. Moreover, he had appropriated the only pair of PJs I had available. Let us draw the curtain on Hill Estate. It went for a song shortly after the crash of 29. But when I got over the initial shock, how relieved I felt, how peaceful, how newly powerful was the mind which had been overlaid with worry. Power. This is the peace of mind thing, you guys. So here, here's, here's, here's what's coming up again. Here's the esoteric just gem that he just <whistles> bing, dropped in the bowl for us. How peaceful, how newly powerful was the mind which had been overlaid with worry. That's why the very first chapter, the very first nugget dropped was peace of mind. Because the, the mind that can attain peace is the powerful mind. And that's what we want. We want powerful minds to attain the things that we want. And stress zaps that power. Stress zaps that power. And unless you're a friggin' Shaolin monk trained at the age of three all the way up to just like wear boulders off the dome and not even break a sweat, then you're probably going to need at least a little bit of finances to keep you out of the fight or flight mode because that's what we're trying to avoid. The, the healing body. I'm getting way ahead of myself. Anywho, peace of mind is where it's at. Peace of mind is where it's at. So three of my friends whose combined assets were less than the amount I lost when I lost my estate did not have faith in the great principle that every adversity has within it the seed of an equivalent benefit. One jumped off a high building on Wall Street. One fired a bullet into his brain, and the third man was hauled out of the Hudson River six weeks after he had jumped in. I made money again. Of course I did. The principles of the science of achievement saw to that. My lost estate had not lost with it my knowledge. Knowledge that any goal set up by a human mind can be achieved by that mind's possessor. And ever since, I have lived comfortably, but without show. For what good is money when it becomes a millstone? Make sure your work and your money benefit someone besides yourself. One of the positive results that came after I had firmly closed the door of my experiences in the Catskill Mountains was this. I found time in which to write more books. These books have benefited me and they have benefited mankind. And so they have benefited me with more than money. When Andrew Carnegie decided to use his great wealth to free to found free libraries, he greatly increased his peace of mind. Henry Ford was pretty tough about giving away his money when at length he learned it was possible to find people who deserved it and would use it well. There is another important principle which ensures that as your wealth grows, 
so will your peace of mind. All right, there's just there's one there right, there's there, this is there's another law and this one's found in the law of compensation. It's a good thing when it comes to money. I've talked about it before, and that's that's money coming to you on an on an energetic etheric level, kind of a woo woo esoterically. You know what I mean? Kind of woo woo. It will it will come to you through the conduit in which you create for it, and if you create a very small conduit for it. You're going to get very little money. This works for all abundance. The co- the, 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 the tethering, the, the bridge to Terabithia, <laughs> the rainbow bridge, whatever tethers, whatever your, whatever your tether is to the etheric, the size of it controls the amount that comes in. So doing something, in other words, what, what, what we're learning from here with Henry Ford or, or, or Napoleon Hill is... By doing something for other people, you're creating a larger conduit. Not only that, you're creating a peace of mind because because helping people is satisfying. The average person wants to help other people. Like every one of you guys would drop a hundred dollar bill on a homeless person's lap in a in a heartbeat, in the blink of an eye. If we were millionaires, or, or at least I would, I'd be like, you get a hundred, you get a hundred. You get a hundred and a couple J's that we rolled last week of the homegrown, and you get a hundred. Like, we give, we we love giving, we love giving. It makes us feel so good, right? So, he's basically saying peace of mind because we learned earlier that peace of mind is going to get you is going to be a peace of mind is a is a healthier place to make decisions from, in terms of success and meeting goals and setting up goals and and attaining them finances making money like when we act out of fear when we act out of lack when we lack or we act out of these lower states if we exist there our actions are also there and those type of limiting actions don't lead to unlimited potential right Cause and effect, baby. We're right back to cause and effect. Plant more perfect causes and you will get more perfect effects. Um, back to the conduit. So if you, if, if, yeah, I think that's, does that, does that make sense? I think that makes sense. I feel like that makes sense.